Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and a while back I was lucky enough to get my hands on the Seagate Fire Cuda 540. This is a PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD, but what's interesting about it is that the insane read-write speeds of 10,000 megabytes per second. Now, when I initially got my hands on this drive, it had come quick on the heels of the Crucial T700, which is actually a little bit faster but was prone to running really hot. Now what I wanted to do was look at the Gen 5 drives and analyze the sort of performance under load. I did some tests with and without heat sinks and stickers to see how it performed. And I'll link to those videos in the description because they're pretty interesting if you've not seen them already. And the conclusion is you need stickers and heat sinks to make sure these drives run cool. But then I wanted to see how it would perform in other instances. Just recently got a Gigabyte ITX board along with a Corsair 2000D, which is a tiny little case. And I wanted to combine these two things for a variety of different tests and to bring you content in interesting ways. Now, this is obviously an ITX case with a small compact form factor. And I've already said that heat is potentially an issue with PCIe Gen 5 drives because although they're really fast, they also get really hot under load because of it. But this motherboard's interesting because it has a fan built into the NVMe port. So just above here is a heat sink, a fan, and obviously the usual thermal pads and stickers and other things going on here as well. Interesting stuff, potentially. I thought this was therefore a perfect time to not only review the motherboard, but also do some tests. Because one of the things I was curious about is how one of these drives would perform as a boot drive. So as in installing Windows on a Gen 5 drive, should you do it? Is it logical? Is it safe to do so? This might seem like a strange question, but with Gen 5 drives running so hot, there is a thermal limit where they may well throttle if they're running really fast and potentially just shut down and stop responding. Now, if you've just got games on them or files, that's fine. If you've got your operating system on there, that's a bit of a problem potentially. So I wanted to use this motherboard in its interesting design and in a smaller case, which is naturally going to be hotter than your average case, to see how it would work. So I took the Firecuda 540, I installed it in this M2 port here, which is a Gen 5 drive, as I said, making the most of the cooling potential of this little fan on the Gigabyte motherboard, which is interesting, by the way. And then I went about installing Windows on this drive, and I wanted to do some tests. So I'm doing some benchmarks, some everyday sort of normal gaming and testing on it, and just to see how it stacks up. Because obviously you don't want to install Windows on your main drive, on your fastest drive, only to find your computer's crashing all the time because your drive's overheating. So I thought it was worth putting it through its tests. Now the first thing I did was download Hardware Info 64 because I wanted to check that it was actually running at the right speed. So you'll notice in here that it is noticed as a Gen 5 port, a Gen 5 drive, and it's running with four lanes of PCIe bandwidth from the CPU through the motherboard. So it should indeed run at that normal speed that it will. Also, Hardware Info notes the top operating temperatures. Now, if you go over to Seagate's website, you can get a couple of guides, both sort of user manuals and other things, which actually talk through various different things. And one of them it notes is the operational temperatures. So the environmental operating temperatures, you'll see it won't operate at below minus 40 degrees C, and it also won't operate at 85 degrees C and above. So that means if it gets too hot, it will either thermal throttle or just completely stop working. 85 degrees might seem really hot, but actually under testing that I've done previously with the Crucial T700, as I said, that drive ran fast and hot. This one, not quite that high, and be sure to check out my other Farcuda videos to see more. But you'll see here that I was doing some tests with Crystal Dismark and got a max of 69 degrees at this point early on in the setup. So obviously I've installed Windows on it at this point, and I'm running various tests. You can see I'm running Cinebench, I'm running Heaven Benchmark and Crystal Discmark all at the same time, as well as installing and recording footage. And I just wanted to push the system to the limit. So it was running hot because it is a small case. You can see I get about 50 degrees C out of some of the fans that are pushing heat out of the system. But this was on purpose. This is intentionally making it hot in there. And even then, the max temperature I got in the drive was 75 degrees C. So that's 10 degrees less than the max that would cause a problem. So it was fine. There was no issues with Windows. And then I'm happy to report that you can game away happily on it as well. 
So I have been testing just gaming on it as well as doing the benchmarking to see if it just handled it well and kept running well. And the answer is yes, yes, it does. It does work fine. Now, this might seem like a really specific niche case, but I think it's important to bear in mind you need good airflow in your system if you're going to use a Gen 5 NVMe SSD, and you need to make sure that it isn't getting too hot and that you're using the thermal pads and the heat sinks as well to make sure it's getting the good cooling and the considerations of what to do if you're buying such top-end hardware, because you might not have even thought about it. And these Gen 5 drives are really awesome, but they could potentially run really hot. Hopefully, if nothing else, this has given you some interesting thoughts on your system or on your future upgrades. Check out the other videos linked in the description to find out more. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.